Welcome, and in this video I butcher up some trim panels. I get really excited when a flap goes up. Victory. And I completely and utterly disgrace myself. I wouldn't disgrace. I ruined a perfectly good bit of leather. But... Welcome to the next video from Auto Garage Life. We're back to the Mercedes SL. Have no fear, although we're back in the garage, it's not for anything bad. All the issues we fixed in the previous videos have been resolved. Valve cover gaskets don't leak. Battery in the back's fixed. No electrical warnings coming up in the dashboard for convenience features. We're all good. So now they can turn their attention to some of the fun stuff. And this one comment below right now if you know what that part is. Guaranteed every R230 SL owner knows what this piece is and knows what I'm about to do. Put that BMW badge down there. We'll deal with that later. So this is the hinge as part of the flaps that come down when you put the roof down and on most SLs that I've seen these are always missing, one of them at least. This one is the original one off my car, it's got a wee bit of damage there that I'll be able to fix with some leather touch-up paint. But it was in the trunk, so this hinge is actually intact. The, the actual clips that join it on are all okay. Um, it's the ones on the car that are broken. So to replace the ones on the car, I bought this off eBay, I'll leave the link in the description. Replacement hinge that you glue onto the existing trim panel in the car. And I've got the original spring and the original rod that goes into this hinge and latches it on to this. So that will just fit in there like that and we'll hinge that onto the car. But Make to do a bit of modification on the panel in the car. So let's get the roof down and I'll show you how to remove the panel and modify it and glue that piece on it and fix this issue for good. Let's go. Okay, so to fix this, this should look like that with a flap sticking up. So I've just put the top down and I've put the top in the trunk in its open position just by pressing the red button and what that allows us to do is get access to that screw there which is a T20 Torx bit. We've also got to remove a bolt in here if I can get down and show you. Oh dear, let me just try something else. There. See that bolt right there? Now you can just see it. I need to remove ooh, my finger. That one, right? I don't need to remove it, I just need to loosen that one. And then I'm going to remove this little silver panel here, which has got a, a T10 Torx bit there, one there, and two at the bottom there. So it's four, five, six, things you need to consider to get this panel out and it is popped in I believe here and here with some uh, clips so you've got a trim tool and pop it out so let's go and do that Right, so, to get at that bolt, put the roof back down into the trunk so that this flap folds down. That means the bracket allows you to get a little ratchet and an 8mm socket in there. And you just loosen this bolt a wee tiny bit. And 
about that much. And that frees up the panel. So we can now go and unclip this and take it off with the trim clips. Yes, there's the two clips, uno, dos, and I'm happy to report I haven't broken any of them. Take this over to the workbench and we'll show you what we need to do to modify this. Okay, here's how the area looks with that panel removed. You can see those two clips are in here and here, which is why I was jimmying it up with a trim clip tool. And there's that bolt that they loosened. So it just slots in there and tightens up against it. And uh, the other bolt is here now. Seeing that one, just watch out for this clip here. Don't lose that when you're loosening it. Keep that on there. And the rest of it's just the uh, where the trim panel sits. So my main worry was not breaking these clips because stupidly I didn't buy any more. But we did well. That's good. So let's take this over to the workbench. Okay, so here's all the bits and pieces that you need for this. Now, I was lucky because my flap here fell into the trunk. It does have a bit of damage there, as I said before, but I'm going to just get some leather paint and touch that up. And the clips on mine are actually intact. So the bit that I needed to buy was this. And this piece I got off eBay, I'll leave the link in the description. And it's a 3D printed plastic piece, which fits directly into the spaces for the hinge, for the factory hinge, like so. Okay, that fits in there. And you'll notice the middle bit there has a gap between the hole and the bracket and the one on the flap itself and that gap is where you put this little spring which is what closes the flap automatically and the top goes down and in between all that you put this connecting rod so we put connecting rod in up to there spring into there push the connecting rod all the way through and this uh, will remain on the flap and we can consider how we're going to get this onto here. Now to get this onto here, we need to remove these flaps. And if you look at this that I bought, they're in exactly the same positions as the factory ones. So this needs to sit underneath here and essentially replace the factory broken clips. Which means we're going to have to cut off the three clips that are there and sand down these bits using a Dremel tool or another brand, of, other, there are other brands available, of course. I don't have a Dremel, it's an Aldi job, but it'll do fine. And then we can glue this surface onto here and we've got a new hinge flap, superb. All right, so now here's the tricky bit, okay? So the little spring here has to be under some form of tension when you put it in to the bracket, right? So the little bit that sticks out straight, that bit, I'm putting between the lip of the plastic there and the leather. So it's a little ridge that you can fit it into, a little gap, I should say. And that will just slot in there, right? Then this bit has to go round the arm or the, the edge or the, whatever you call it, the bracket here around the back, so that when you lift it, it springs back into place. Now this bit's going to be tricky. So I'll, what we'll do is, I need both hands for this, so I'll set the camera up some other way. I want to slot this in through the holes, with this in place, and the spring in between the hole. So let's go for that. OK, 
Okay, so that was a pain. So the hardest bit of this is see that little spring clip there? That. That's the way you have to put it in. So the L-shaped part of it goes round the middle hinge of your new bracket, right? And the straight part, like I said earlier, goes in between. Right, I'll show you there. See that ridge there? That ridge is there, so that little straight part of the spring slides in between the plastic and the leather. Okay, so that goes there. And I had to use a little screwdriver to press down on the spring because it wants to come out that way. So I pressed down on it and pushed the rod, the connecting rod, back in. So we'll finish that just now. But before I put it in all the way, the way to test it is if this does that and springs back down, that's what you want. When I first tried it, the spring in the wrong way, and this just basically moved and stayed where it was. So you want that to be returning to its original position, like so. And to do that, the L-shaped part of the spring has to be there with the straight part going into the flap itself. Got it? Right, let's go. Ding, 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 ding. That'll work absolutely smashing, right? So now that that's in, we can move on to adjusting this piece here to have it like that. And this will need to glue on to there. There's also, when you're putting this back in, you'll notice there's a little spindle right there see that one hard to see i've got there you go that that goes in to the wee tiny wee hole right there to line this up so now time for the messy bit we'll whip out the old rotary tool the dremel and we'll grind all this back okay so first uh, i'm going to cut these bits off, just for a wee saw. Little Dremel style tool. It's not a Dremel though, but it does the job. Now I've cut most of the, the hooks off, it's now time to just sand the rest of it back using the sanding attachment, so... Okay, so, there's what I've ended up with. It's not jaggy, it's not smooth, I've sanded off all of the little existing brackets that were there. And you're basically left with that, which looks as if nothing can hook onto it. However, put this in now. And hook it on to the wee hook at the front. There we have it. And you can see on the underside where I need to glue this piece on. And that's why we had to sand all that away. So with a nice flat surface, just to glue this bit onto here, which is what we'll do now. So I'm just going to use some Loctite for this. I'm pretty sure it'll be strong enough. I'll keep an eye on it, and if it's not strong enough, I'll get some epoxy glue for it and put that on, but I'm pretty sure this will be okay. And on the edge here, and we'll leave this for about seven or eight years and just make sure it is actually secure. Ah, Loctite overspill. Disaster. Young buddies. Doesn't matter how careful I am with Loctite or glue, it always gets everywhere. Always. Okay, so we'll leave this to set for a while. As you can see, a little flap's a little bit messed up. I did spill some super glue on it and ruined it completely. However, I'm going to do a leather repair on this bit anyway, so we're going to be respraying 
this with a leather die that I'll try and get to match. And we'll just leave this in place for a wee while. As you can see, carefully lift it up underneath, there's where it's attached to the bit that we sanded down. And we'll just keep it here. Alright, so that repair has worked out really well, with the exception of the glue that I spilled, which I'll fix later on. I need to fix this panel anyway, it's a bit beaten up. But, point is, the actual repair has went extremely well. That's holding really well. I left it overnight just to set. Everything's set there. Everything's glued on, it's pretty secure. Pin's still in place and we're good to go. So we can put this back onto the car now and then I'll sort this. My own disgrace. That I've ruined a perfectly good bit of leather, but it'll come off with some acetone. If it doesn't, we'll just clean it up as best we can. We'll paint over it. But let's get this back on the car. So, usual story, installations, the reverse of the removal. So let's put it back on. First test passed, didn't pop off. And last piece of the puzzle is this guy. Last screw to put in is the one that lives in there. And to do that, you lift up the roof. And this will test the flap as well. Victory! The flap is still there. Make sure that little clip lines up at the back so it doesn't stick out any. And I think that is us. Good to go. That's everything screwed back together. We've got the bolt underneath the flap itself. We have that screw right there in with the clip still intact, nicely hidden. Everything's dead secure. Nothing's moving. And we've got the four screws and the metal panel at the front there. And it looks as if a little flap is doing exactly what it should do. So that's pretty much what happens when the car roof is up down it's retracting perfectly now to give it a clean up because that looks horrific so there we have it that's a successful repair didn't take long longest bit was waiting for the glue to dry it's fine and all i did sometimes is just double check fitment compared to the other side which is absolutely perfect I would call that one hell of a successful repair. Put the trunk down. There we go. All panels back to where they should be. So I'll give this a clean up and we'll try and get some of this glue off. I'm going to have to order some uh, leather repair kit for this little panel. But still going to cost me a bit less than a tenner to do that, as opposed to God knows how much from Mercedes to replace that whole panel. I have no idea. I've heard this panel's in the two or three hundred pound bracket, and it only comes with a wee flap. But that is excellent. So there we go, folks. If I get the cleaning and the leather stuff back or ordered before I release this video, I'll just tag it on to the end here. So for now, that's been a really good repair. I'm really happy with that. I'll link all the stuff that I used 
in the description below. Please like the video. Um, it does help out a lot. And please subscribe because I want to continue making these videos on this car and others. And I want to keep going with it. So helping out by doing something for free, liking and subscribing, is brilliant for, the, for YouTube. Comment below as well with anything you want to see me do next or if you see anything in this video that you would rather I did differently or did wrong. But thank you very much folks and we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.